Well, good day once again. Another Devo today. Looking forward to uh, spending a little bit of time with you. Uh, just, you know, one verse today, so it's not going to be super intense, so that's kind of nice. But uh, this is, we're starting the book of Ezra. And as we go through just probably about four uh, little devos out of Ezra, to just refresh your memory on what Ezra had to do with, Ezra was one of the first groups, led one of the first groups that um, left out of Babylon to, uh, from the captivity to then repopulate uh, Jerusalem. And they went to really uh, rebuild the temple. That was their intent. In a little bit, we'll catch Nehemiah, and Nehemiah's intent was to go build the, rebuild the walls around Jerusalem secure. So a couple of different things in this. One, this is the fulfillment of what the Lord had spoken through Jeremiah the prophet years and years prior uh, to them even going into the captivity, but that then they would be in captivity for 70 years and then be released. And so they're paying attention to the word, and the word is alive and active just like it is in your life and there's fulfillment to it and so this is what's going on they've gone out they've gone to um, they've been released by uh, uh, cyrus king of persia and they've gone to go rebuild uh, the temple and in verse one of chapter two it says now these are the people of the province who came back from the captivity of those who had been carried away whom nebuchadnezzar the king of babylon had carried away to babylon and who returned to Jerusalem and Judah, everyone to his own city. And then it goes down, and it, it, if you had a Bible you, you opened, you'd see it. Uh, but I can tell you that from verse 2 on down, for quite a ways, it just goes through and it lists every family name and uh, how many uh, people uh, were with that family group. And it just lists them out. This is what I wanted to talk about, that it says, now these are the people of the province who came back from the captivity. It's, we're looking at this big group of people, but I think it's interesting that God's word records each and every one of these groups by name. And it reminded me of John 10, 3, where it says, he knows uh, uh, us by name. And this is speaking of the... Uh, when Jesus was talking about the, being the good shepherd, and he says, yeah, I, he goes, I, I, he, that the, a good shepherd knows his sheep and he knows them by name, and he calls them and interacts with them by name. And then also in, uh, in Luke's account, in chapter 12, uh, verse 7, um, he knows the number of hairs on our head, it says. And so that there's individual personal identifications that God sees in each of us, and I just, I just wanted you to ponder that today, that God knows your name. He knows where you live. I may not know exactly where you live, but he knows where you live. And that matters. It matters that God knows us by name individually, and he wants to have an individual personal relationship with you. So it's not just about going to church. Going to church is a great idea, but it's not just about that. It's about this personal relationship. I, I really reject this idea of cultural Christianity, um, where I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian because my parents and my grandparents and so on were Christians. No, I'm a Christian because Jesus has made himself known to me, real to me, and I'm following him personally. And he is my God, my Savior, and he knows me and I know him. That's the greatest truth you can ever have, is knowing Jesus. It'll carry you on into eternity. God bless you. Have a great day.